Hey, this is Soda Pop from Soda Hughes, and you are watching the Malak channel. And today we're going to open up 250 years of Japanese art by Roni Nier and Susugo Yoshida. Got some nice M papers. Um, I got this on Thrift Books. Uh, thrift Books. I was just uh, browsing around. Uh, it's focused on ukiyo-e drawing or pictures of the floating world. I really love uh, ukiyo-e. A lot of like the portraiture and the just woodcut print landscapes are just so beautiful to me. And I've got a little bit of history and context at the beginning, which is pretty cool. I mean, especially, I mean, I don't like it when there's too much text for, uh, like, our book. I'm just like, oh, man, I wish there was more images. But, you know, when it's a big book like this, um, and you have the ability to, like, include a lot of the history and context, I thought, why not? Yeah, we'll just quick go through this, because, like, I'll read this on my own later. Kind of relief cutting and then do the, the different colors and layers separately I took a printmaking class I did similar stuff Moronobu now we're getting to the color images just lovely stuff it's also really interesting how it created um, you know traditions of ways of representing you know life and stuff that you know, each one had their own distinct style and they were separate, but like a lot of those visual languages and systems were pretty consistent in some ways. It's interesting because, you know, you can tell what it is. It's realistic. Oh, uh oh, when was that made? 1707 I wonder if that is uh, simply just you know the symbol of well-being or if uh, that's if there was already like a Nazi influence at that point there's no way right that's way too far ahead way way too far ahead so yeah that's just you know the use of that symbol in a uh, different way fascinating it's a pretty cool symbol in terms of its design I love uh, some of those uh, symmetric logos and icons. It's really unfortunate that, you know, it was used for <laughs> something so absolutely atrocious. It's always disappointing when people have to ruin something. And boy, did they ruin it, jeez. Yeah, it is kind of floating because, you know, there is, uh, the perspective isn't perfect and a lot of the times the background or the areas that they stand on, you know, they could really just like fall off. It's kind of flat, but I love it. I love just the harmony, the flow of the lines, the way objects and everything are separated. Kids wrestling. And also just man, the the clothing and fashion in these is awesome. Harunobu. Harushige. Yaki. I'm gonna have to look up a lot of these. The road to realism. Hmm. So things begin to get a little more realistic at this point, is what he's saying. I mean, I guess you can see in the faces, in the feet, they're maybe pushing it a little bit closer. I honestly like the old style of faces a little more. I 
it is interesting how, um, you know, until like the modernist era, is, it seems like Western art was just uh, advancing and advancing uh, towards realism uh, and a different kind of uh, standard for what was considered good representational art. Although, you know, that is what uh, is chosen to be remembered. It'd be interesting because you know there was the uh, there was the Japanophiles and all those people who uh, kind of were going around the uh, impressionist times and stuff like that and expressionist times. Uh, but I wonder, you know, there's so much art that's forgotten. I wonder if people were influenced earlier, if there were really great, uh, more line and flat artists in the Western world way earlier. And it is a. It seems to be, you know, honestly, a more intuitive way of representation, you know, the way uh, children draw things, uh, are contour and silhouettes usually. You look a lot of the uh, hieroglyphs and uh, old Egyptian art, uh, not, not talking about uh, sculpture, but, you know, a lot of their drawing and stuff like that. This is amazing. That's so beautiful. Kiyonaga, I really like Kiyonaga, jeez. <laughs> yeah, I really like this one. I've been thinking about trying to do like uh, a couple of ukiyo-e books. Um, I don't know who I'd collaborate with. Um, some of these images, you know, they do have archives in certain places, but sometimes it can be hard to find some of that stuff. It's really unfortunate because I feel like this stuff is so wonderful, and I don't know if you don't if you don't make books, you don't put things online, you don't talk about things, you don't show them, uh, they, they become forgotten and they disappear. And I don't think this stuff is uh, should be allowed to disappear. This stuff is worth keeping to me. I think it's wonderful. I also like this one, Shincho. I like. Whatever this area is, I like it. Just the very interesting ways of uh, depicting landscape and water. How do you draw water? Utamaro. I think this might be the artist I was even considering uh, starting with creating a book about. Because, you know, a lot of this stuff has just fallen into the public domain. I don't know, you get these things that, I mean, they are just sort of, there's sort of a allure, a magic to like Hiroshige's uh, Great Wave off of Kanagawa. It's such a wonderful image. Uh, you know, you just see that thing beat to death and everyone goes on about it. You have people who um, probably don't even know what it's from. I'm sure some people probably think it's like from an anime or manga or something and uh, you know they wear it on their shirt and stuff and it's just like uh, you know I don't know if you, if you like that image there's probably a, a whole world of wonderful things out there that you could discover. Dying their teeth black. Interesting. Yeah, these are really lovely too. kind of fun seeing like uh, Vincent Trinidad's ukiyo-e style uh, posters and stuff. It's kind of tempting to work in sort of a similar style. Um, I think there's a guy on YouTube. It's really cool. Oh, jeez. Looking like the, the fish eyes. <laughs> but, um... What was I thinking? Ah, uh, yeah, David Bull. He, it's really cool seeing him work. He's an artisan. Uh, just really awesome seeing the process and also the finished products. I uh, kind of want to do something similar at some point. 
I don't think the uh, printmaking professor uh, at my university really liked me much, though. So I, like, tried to get back into using the lab, and he's like, ah, you know, we'll talk about it later, we'll talk about it later. It's never happened. <laughs> That's all good, though. I'll find another way later. That's yeah, lovely. Yeah, I like this series. Hmm. This is very interesting. Here's Hokusai, the one that everyone knows, but I bet they don't they don't know these. Honestly, I haven't seen a few of these myself. The views of Mount Fuji. Oh, there it is, there's that wave. I've also been seeing this one a little bit more frequently too. Mount Fuji is crazy. I think it'd be cool to visit and also hike it. If you're allowed to. I bet you are, but who knows? Love to do my own views of uh, yeah. really hoping to get to Korea. Who knows, by the time I uh, post this video, I might actually be in Korea. I really want to uh, Hiroshige. Yeah. Went through a book of his. Um, 100 views of Ido, I think. Hiroshige is the one who uh, did the Pinkerton looking one. Interesting. Yeah, this is the cover of the book I uh, went through by Taskin. Yeah, I want to do some art of some cities and landscapes there. And I just want to draw, I want to make things. I want to take those things that I make and put them in books. I want to make a lot of books. I love art books. Love making them. Well, this is a very interesting one. Eesh, in a mosquito net. What a challenge. <laughs> Moonbeams. Yeah, interesting light play. <laughs> what the fuck? What is that? Is that a cat? Dancing cat? <laughs> oh. That's cool. Oh, wow, this one's lovely. And so much great art. Crazy. And I bet, I wonder, I feel like none of these people could have known that some random kid in America was going to be flipping through just losing their mind at their artwork. I wonder if that would make them happy. The end of traditional woodblock prints. That's cool. Very ominous. I like that. And I wonder if part of the reason for the end is the uh, introduction of Western influence, because this seems like a hybrid, but I could be wrong. Oh, these are also so cool, just the lines, my god. Uh, I wonder, because that outfit, I wonder if we're getting into the Meiji period or whatever it's called. Bath 
houses. Yeah, bizarre. Very interesting. Wonderful collection of images. I'm so excited to read and learn more about ukiyo-e. Also excited to look up some of those artists. Maybe make books, if I can, of some of them. I think that'd be so cool. I don't know, just keep sharing the art and make sure it's never forgotten. Just create beautiful tributes to it. Anyway, yeah, I love art, if you can't already tell. Uh, if you wanna support me in supporting other artists and uh, continuing to share visual media and go on this you know, journey of art, uh, maybe check out my Patreon and also check for any affiliate links in the description. Like and subscribe so we can keep doing this. Thank you so much for watching the video and I hope to see you again. Take care. You're such a soul.